The truth is that you're here because you wanted to feel like something you're not. A hero. You know what I find genuinely fascinating? It's the little things you can infer about a person when you connect a few dots. Sometimes there's no real correlation between any of them, but when you start to see a pattern emerge, well, <laughs> it can really start telling you more than words ever could. Watch, I'll give you an example. That'll be this video, a quick game of connect the dots. <laughs> Nothing fancy, just some fun. So, let's begin with our first dot. Doug Spink. Now, I won't go into too much detail about who Doug Spink was. Toad McKinley has already made a wonderful three-part series about the horrendous things the man did in his life. I'll link them down below for you. That said, I will give you a small summary, just so you get the gist of it. He was a failure as a businessman, a failure as a drug smuggler, a failure as a son and husband, a failure as a human being, and a zoo sadist to boot. Quite the impressive resume, to be sure. Now this is just dot number one on the list, so let's go into dot number two. Sean Patrick Kreese, aka Quantum Kitty. Now I won't dive too deep into him either, I've already put a video out that details Quantum's escapades, so I'll link that below. Again though, you'll get the spark notes here. Quantum is an animal abuser, a necrophile who has admitted that he fucks roadkill, a serial doxer, and a general psychopath. Impressive, don't I know it. Now, let's talk about dot number three. Valerie, also known as Hypnotist Sappho. Ah, uh, there's a name that really needs no introduction, right? Most of you who watch me found me through my content about her, but if you don't know the lore behind Sappho, I'll direct you to an in-depth video made by Turkey Tom. It's a good watch. It contains all the relevant details, and I highly recommend it to anyone who wants to know more. However, I will, just like the previous two, give you the spark notes. Sappho is a zoophile who groomed multiple children, used hypnosis to take advantage of her quote-unquote patients, and gained the trust of unsuspecting victims by presenting herself as a therapist, despite having no qualifications, only to turn around and abuse that trust. Now, the question here is, what do these three people all have in common? With the good news out of the way, we can finally close the chapter on Spink and shift the focus to his cohort. Before his death, he was one of the founding members of the Zooier Than Thou podcast, along with his co-host Toggle, and today's episode is going to be dedicated to that podcast, its hosts, guests, orbiters, and the depraved community that they are trying to build, centered around the sexual abuse of animals. It's time for our Halloween Spunktacular. It's a spooky double feature, with a guest appearance by At Hypnotist Sappho, a new song by One Big Grumpy Rat and Dearest Doggy, and our Semhian Ritual for the Lost Loved Ones. Enjoy while the veil is thin. For me, an important basis is recognizing animal personhood is important for me, mm -hmm. but like romance doesn't really factor in. And that's partly because I don't think it factors in for me, but I also have a very casual relationship with sex, whether it's with humans or with animals. Mm -hmm. I think you could be a zoo and be respectful towards other people without being romantically involved. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts, Quantum? When I first came into the community, I had, in my mind, a pretty clear idea of what I thought a zoo vial was. But then I ended up talking to you, Toggle, about it. And, um, you know, I kind of stated to you that I thought, like, Love Cat, it was more more so a romantic kind of thing. Well, that would be none other than the Zoo You're Now podcast, of course. Oh, uh, well, ain't that a kick in the head. You see, it's it's interesting what you can tell from that, isn't it? You do see what I'm driving at here, right? Well, just in case you don't, why don't I elucidate? You see that character. I'm sure you're familiar with him. That's Toggle, also known as Buck Riley. Now, Toggle is one of the original hosts of Zooier Than Thou, along with Doug Spank, which says a lot in and of itself, but when Doug died, Toggle was solely responsible for the podcast. 
including who was allowed to be a guest on any given episode. What this means is that Toggle was the person who built a platform with an abuser and used it to give at least two other abusers a platform once he had executive control over it. I mean, most of you are inclined to agree with the sentiment that all zoo files are abusive by nature, but even on the off shot, some of you disagree with that sentiment. I don't think many of you will disagree when I call people like Quantum and Sappho abusers, given what's been revealed about them by myself and others. We're not done just yet, however. There is one tweet I'd like to read for you, because it really does complete the picture. Making bedfellows with anti-zoos in order to smear the name of other zoos is in pretty poor taste. If you're the kind of zoophile who listens to what Twitter anti-zoos had to say about another zoo, you're not the kind of person I want around. I don't have time for that bullshit. When we think about all the horrendous things those three people did behind closed doors, the fact Toggle was in direct contact and helped platform all three of them, and this tweet where Toggle openly condemns the idea that a zoophile might report any heinous actions somebody in their community commits, it really makes you wonder, doesn't it? It almost makes you wonder if he knew what Doug and Sean and Valerie had been doing all along. After all, one doesn't just accidentally find themselves surrounded by that kind of company on so many occasions. One doesn't accidentally publicly condemn the idea of others in the community reporting its own members who've gone too far. And one doesn't accidentally ignore all evidence of the danger these people pose to those they come in contact with. One time? Well, that's unfortunate. Twice? Well, that's a coincidence. But three times? Well, that... that, dear viewer... that's a pattern.